time. So, I built a thing. What happened was this. Uh, my friend Mars Girl had her guitar stolen from her storage unit a while back, and it was one her mom gave her. That, that pissed me right off. So, a couple of us got together, and we got her a replacement. Something fancy, just a Squire Classic Vibe Strat that I found on Reverb. But it's a solid guitar that should last her for, well, ever, actually. But I had a little bit left over, and I also have piles and piles of junk. So I sorted through it all, and between a little bit to get some capacitors and resistors I didn't have, and all the stuff I did have, it was enough to build a brand new amplifier. So I got a hold of a broken amp, and I moved to convert it from solid state. Hmm? What solid state? Oh. Well, children. It's the devil. Solid state electronics are a blight on us all. It's the end of technology. It's the end of humanity. Had it not been for solid state electronics, Firefly would have never been canceled, Mr. Peanut would still be alive, and cats would have never, ever happened. What are solid state electronics? Transistors, little chips of silicon that direct electricity on where to go and how. Each year, they get smaller and smaller, more and more complex, and we all know why. We know. Okay, okay, I'm exaggerating just a tiny little bit. Solid state electronics aren't all that bad. They have their uses and they work fine, but is there an alternative? Oh yes. Tubes! There's a special magic in a vacuum tube amplifier. I even talked about that in a previous video where I built one from scratch. Remember? <sighs> yeah, of course you don't. Thanks, YouTube algorithm. I'll link it in the description. <sighs> what we're going to do is take a cheap, busted solid state amplifier, and with some tools and some knowledge, we're turning it to one of these. 1957 Fender Tweed Princeton which at the time was considered an amplifier for students. It's a simple, versatile circuit that allows for either clean headroom or crank distortion, and at only 5 watts, it's powerful without being earth-shattering. So, let's get started. Here's what we're working with, an acoustic lead G20. Ironically, this is today's version of a student amplifier. The only trouble is, the one I found was flat busted. What we're salvaging are two of the most expensive components when building an amp. The metal chassis to hold the components, and the wood cabinet to house the chassis and the speaker. Wood and metalworking from scratch are outside my expertise, and buying is way too pricey, so we're just going to convert what's here. Is it the best stuff? No. But it'll definitely do the job. First thing, we pull the chassis and replace the junky speaker that came with it. I had a couple of the Jensen mod speakers for a while. They're not the best in the world, but for the price, they do sound pretty nice. So I uh, pulled one out of storage and replaced the junk one that came with the amp. Next, I stripped the chassis and drilled holes for the tube sockets. Now, this chassis is made of steel, so in time it could rust. That's why I put on a coat of spray enamel and, um, what? For the life of me. I don't know what in the hell happened there. All I know is that this paint plus primer all in one, these are lies. While the finish accidentally looked really neat, by the next day it had self-destructed. So start over. Acetone and sanding to strip it bare, and this time we use a proper primer and finish it up with several coats. There we go. Now, the new amplifier won't need all of these extra holes for the controls, so we have three options. Leave them open, ew, plug them somehow, eh, or craft a new faceplate to hide them entirely. New faceplate it is. A little scrap aluminum, a Dremel, and a lot of polishing later, and we're suddenly looking acceptable. I even took the liberty of using some of the aluminum to cover the place where the original brand logo put holes in the Tolex, and added a period appropriate Fender logo, because shut up. Okay, we've got our chassis, we got our cabinet, we've got our parts, let's build this sucker. 
Like in my basement build, we twist the filament wires to cancel noise, and we keep the wire runs elevated above the sockets, just like Fender used to do. This time, I'm building the circuit with terminal strips. While fiberboard or turret boards are more authentic, terminal strips are cheaper, and they also allow more flexibility in how we'll ultimately build the thing. A quick test shows the power transformer seems to be working, so it's on to the next steps. Here we have the completed circuit. On this side is the actual audio part. Preamplifier, volume, tone, etc. This is where signal comes in from outside the amp and gets, well, amplified. On the other side is the power supply. The power transformer takes AC current from the wall, changes it to DC current the amp can use, and then this set of filter capacitors stops the converted power from jittering around like a caffeine addict. Finally, everything goes to the output transformer, which sends the signal to the speaker and makes the noise. All right, let's button it up and voila! A 1957 Princeton clone. Sort of. We'll get to that, but first, I'm using this video to show Mars Girl how to assemble her amp once it gets to her. Hi, Kaylin. Uh, see, I can't ship it with the tubes in the sockets because they might get broken or damaged. So, let's go through the setup. You have three tubes in the same. First is the 5Y3 rectifier, part of the components that convert AC to DC. Next is the 6V6 power tube that's responsible for output to the speaker, and this last one is a 12AX7 preamp tube, which takes the signal from your guitar and makes it loud enough for the amplifier to work with. Now when it gets shipped out, it's going to look like this. No tubes in the socket. I'll, I'll demonstrate inserting each tube. Uh, it's easiest with the amp face down, like this. One thing to remember is these tubes are keyed to the sockets. They'll only go in one way, so you can't put them in wrong. The 8-pin tubes have this little guide bump, and the 9-pin tube has an open section with no pins to show you how to insert it. Put the tube in a socket, rotate it until you feel it slot into place, and gently but firmly push it down. Next, for the 8-pin tubes, uh, slide these retention springs up and over the tube. It'll take a little effort, but not a lot. For the 9-pin tube, take the included shield, place it so the spring fits over the glass nub on top, Push down and twist to lock the shield in place over the tabs. There you go, tubes inserted. One last thing. If you plug it in, flip it on, and nothing happens, check the fuse. It's located right here in the power socket. Uh, you'll need a small flathead screwdriver to pop it out. There's a fuse that connects to the wiring and a spare. Plus, I'll have packed a bunch of extra for you. Sometimes a fuse goes bad. Replace it, just keep rolling. But if the amp keeps popping fuses, it means there's a problem and it's protecting itself. At that point, find a technician to help you. All right, we're ready for a demo. First, we can keep the gain down for clean tones. or we can crank it up for full-on crunch distortion. You also have a tone knob, which will change the tone from bright and chimey to dark and thick. Extra thick! <laughs> ah, but wait. That's not all. I added one more neat little feature. Adjustable negative feedback. No, that's not YouTube comments. By feeding back a little of the signal onto itself, out of phase, it cleans up the overall sound. The more feedback, the more it changes the signal. Now, normally this is a fixed value, but I've made it adjustable with this knob so you can experiment with tones. 
It's controlled by the foot switch, and it sort of acts as almost a second channel on the amplifier, letting you swap between two different sounds with the push of a button. And if you don't want to use it, simply unplug the foot switch. The amp goes back to default. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this little video about my quarantine project, and I hope Kaylin enjoys her amp. Also, thanks to Dom, Allison, Roses, Mike, Greg, Tara, Dan, Dan Olson, Luke, and anyone else who pitched in, and I forgot, sorry, who made this possible. Things are kind of messed up right now, but it felt good to, you know, just do something nice for somebody. And hey, if you're interested in making one of these for yourself, uh, there are kits like this all over the internet to get you started. Google for 5F1 or 5F2A, and you'll be able to find stuff starting as low as $200. Now, that's not nothing, especially these days, but it's a fun project while we're all stuck inside. Well, see you next time, and now, glorious noise!